Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. In this video, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about boring and honing and what the big difference is. Um, quite simply, boring is when you are roughing out the cylinder and taking out a lot of material and honing is the final step where you actually put that 45 degree crosshatch pattern in. It's that final step you do right at the end. Um, there's also something called deglaze honing, which is where you usually use one of these, which is called a flex hone, also called a dingleberry hone. And what this does is, you know, you run it in and you run it down for, you know, just, just a couple of strokes. I don't know, 20, 30, 40. All you're really doing is you're, you're giving the, the cylinder bore a new surface. You're sort of... Uh, on the old surface, there's going to be sort of, uh, there are going to be scratches remaining. They're going to have oil, like, you know, like microscopic droplets of oil sort of embedded in them. And if you just go ahead and put new piston rings in, they won't seal quite properly. So uh, what you need to do is use one of these. You, you just give the, the bore a new surface. You're not really taking out a lot of material. This thing, I think, takes out probably two ten thousandths worth of material. Um, but you're just giving it a new crosshatch pattern and giving it new holes for the oil to get in and seal and for the new piston rings to wear into and seal to. So uh, you would use this, you would, you would do a deglaze hone if, you, if your cylinders did not have too much out of round wear and they didn't have too much tapered wear and you would be able to reuse them and you'd be able to reuse your old pistons and just put everything back together. That's when you would do a deglaze hone. You can use one of these types of hones or you can use um, uh, another kind of hone which actually has three stones that are spring-loaded and the stones you know move this way and that way and you know those hones are, are very cheap you can get them anywhere uh, probably for under twenty dollars you can also rent them from your auto parts store in most part in most cases those stones will also do a deglaze hone but this does provide a better finish so uh, I think everyone kind of likes to go with these because it just gives you a better finish so, um, that's what, th that covers that when it comes to just reusing your block. Um, in my particular case, I can't reuse my block because my out of round wear and my tapered wear is too great in cylinders two through six. So I need to actually get my block overboard for oversized pistons. So, um, I'm going to go to the machine shop to do this because they can do everything right and they can give them that, that proper plateau finish right at the end. Uh, it is possible, I suppose, to do this at home. They do sell something called a rigid hone, which uh, is, I'll try to throw, I'll try to find a picture of it and throw it up on the screen. Instead of having, you know, spring loaded shoes that that actually move this way and that way, the shoes don't move. They're actually rigid like this. And the nice thing about that is that you know you can use that and and, and it's it's a lot easier to get the uh, tapered wear out of your cylinder using that because you can sort of linger down in the bottom uh, uh, you know longer and then you know and then kind of spend less time at the top and get your cylinder bores uh, get, and machine the uh, taper out of your cylinder bores. I suppose you could do that with the spring loaded stones as well. You just have to you know you have to be careful and check as you go along the way. Um, the big difference is that the, the rigid hone, which is made by Lyle and costs about $120, it's going to have more aggressive stones, so it'll take out more material faster. Um, I'm not going to go that route because that, you know, it costs $120 and you might as well just go to the machine shop and, you know, pay them the $120 to just do it with a professional sun in machine to, to get it all, you know, perfect and, all that stuff. Um, if you are going to do it at home, I absolutely recommend you have a dial bore gauge so that you can check your taper and, and check your out of roundness as you go, uh, because you want to make sure you're on the right track. You don't want to make your cylinders worse than when you started. Uh, now I want to talk about torque plates. Torque plates is actually a really interesting topic. Um, a torque plate is a big, thick, piece of steel or aluminum that they are going to bolt to the top of your engine. It's got holes in it. Uh, and they do that for the final honing process when they use, you know, something similar to this, but you know, uh, when they do the final honing process and, and get the, and put the 45 degree hot cross hatch in there, what they're doing with that flex plate is they're simulating the load that's going to be placed on the top of the block 
by the cylinder head and the distortion that that cylinder head is going to cause. Believe it or not, it actually will distort these bores and pull them out of round. So if you didn't use a torque plate and you just used one of these or whatever and you you did your machining here at home and you bolted your cylinder head on, it would actually pull your what you think is round cylinder out of round. So that's actually, you know, that's a that's a pretty big problem. And the reason it happens is because you can see the that the heads the head stud holes are right here and right here. And what happens is they sort of pull towards one another. They pull this way and they pull that way. So they pull it, they pull the cylinder into an, an egg shape. Kind of interesting. So you want to, what, what I'm really saying here is you want to find a machine shop that will torque plate your engine when they, when they do the final honing, uh, because that's, that's really the, that's, that's the professional way to go. That's what, what you're supposed to do with all modern engines. So that's one thing to look for when you go to find a machine shop in your area. There are lower rent machine shops, just that there, there are all kinds of machine shops, just like there are all kinds of auto repair places. There are places where the guys really don't know what they're doing and places where there are, you know, a lot of experts there. So that's one thing to look for. And that's how you can tell one good machine shop from the, from a bad one. I've already found one machine shop that wasn't that good. Doesn't torque plate his engines, wouldn't tell me what kind of cutter he's using to machine the cylinder head and make sure that it, that it would get the, the proper RA finish. But I think I found another one in my area that will do that. Um, another thing or the last thing I wanna talk about is something called plateau finishing, which is, uh, I'm, you know, the, the, one of the modern developments in engine rebuilding in the last couple years. And what it is, is if you would, if you would just use those spring loaded stones, like in the old days, it would actually create, you know, if, if you were to look at the, the uh, surface of the cylinder, it would look sort of like a mountain range turned on its side. There are all these little peaks and valleys of the, of the, you know, the cut metal. And what would happen in the old days with your old, you know, the old style piston rings, the reason you needed time to break your engine in is be, or, or you needed time for the rings to seat is those rings would move up and down over those sharp, you know, mountains of metal and they would shear off the, the metal. And, uh, and so they would take off the peaks, but they would leave the little valleys and the little valleys are where the oil sits. So those sharp peaks get, get sort of sheared off by the rings as the engine gets worn in. Well, engine machine shops have realized that they could actually take off those peaks during the machining process such that the rings would not have to do that work and they wouldn't have to, to they wouldn't need time to actually uh, bed in and, and seal. They would actually just bed in really quickly. You know, you do like one or two dyno poles and your, your rings are seated and you're all good. So that plateau finish is done with these, these uh, what's called plateau brushes. They remove the stones from the rigid hone and they put in these little, they're sort of nylon brushes with little abrasives on, on the tips. And they run that through for a couple of strokes right at the very end and that knocks off the peaks and you have that nice plateau finish. According to the manufacturer of the Flex Hone Brush Research, this thing will give you a plateau finish. Uh, and they have like a, you know, a 60 page sort of tech document on, on this and all kinds of stuff. So according to them, this will give you a plateau finish. So if, if you were to use those, uh, uh, one of those flexible stone hones or a rigid hone, you wanna follow up with this to try to give yourself a plateau finish. That way uh, your rings will, will, will uh, seat faster and all that good stuff. One other thing I wanted to mention, there's one other piece of information. Um, this, if you, if you were gonna use this, you're not gonna use this to remove a lot of material. Like I said, it's gonna remove about two thousandths of material by the time you're done doing your deglaze hone. It would take forever to use this thing to, you know, to, to actually get a lot of, to, to maybe get out the taper in your cylinder or to get, it, get the out of roundness wear out of your cylinder if that's what you're going for. Uh, so you might want to use those, those, uh, the, the, the flexible stone hone to actually do, you know, some initial machining. The, the difference between those two things is that this, this, because of the little balls, this tends to follow the contours inside the cylinder more than the, the, the triple stone hone, flexible hone. Um, this 
is not going to get out your, your egg-shaped wear. It could get out your tapered wear if you linger down in the bottom of the, the cylinder more often than at the top. But again, it's going to take forever. So you normally use the, the, the three stone flexible hone. And the, because of the design of that, because it's spinning around rapidly and the centrifugal force is kind of holding it you know, in, a, in a perfect circle, it will tend to highlight the, uh, the out of roundness in your cylinder. And if you keep machining for long enough, you'll get the out of roundness out of your cylinder. So that type of hone is better for correcting an out of round situation. You want to come in with this after that and put that plateau finish in right at the end. So that's the procedure, again, if you're doing this at home, but I don't, you know, if you're, if you are machining or if you're, if you're trying to machine for uh, oversized cylinders, let the machine shop do that because it's just, they know how to do it right. It's probably gonna cost the same amount of money and it's just better to let them do that. If you're, if you are at, um, if you don't need to machine for oversized cylinders and you just want to try to correct a little bit of taper, use the three stone flex hone. It's not called a flex hone, but, but the triple stone flexible stone hone. Use one of those first to get out your out of roundness and to try to get as much as, of your taper out as possible. Use the dial bore gauge to check and make sure that you're getting your taper out and uh, as well as your out of roundness, and then follow up with a flex hone right at the end to put the final crosshatch pattern in there and try to give yourself as much of a plateau finish as you possibly can. Anyway, I hope you learned something about uh, honing and boring. Um, if you did, and please hit, hit, please hit the subscribe button. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.